Guys, I hope you liked that demonstration of Mimic Plus, and it gave you some ideas on how you can use it with your footage. A big shout out to my boy Fez, the man with the dancing feet. He's got some moves, doesn't he? All right, let's get started. I'm gonna go over the options. I've got Final Cut Pro X open. I have a clip in my timeline, and I'm gonna go ahead and load Mimic Plus by dragging it onto my clip right here. Next, inside the inspector, we'll see Mimic Plus. It's got several options, but before we go over the options, let's explain that it does have an on-screen control, so if you wanna change the effect angle, you can do here with the on-screen control. I'll press Apple Z to undo. Of course, this can be changed here in the inspector as well. Now, this effect angle is gonna change what you can change here in the effect position as well as the source offset. So at zero or 180 degrees, you're gonna use the X, both in the position as well as the offset. If it was at 90 or 270 degrees, then the Y options come into play. Let me show you what I mean. So if I go ahead and drag this here, we'll notice that I'm changing the position of the effect, right? Next, I can change the offset of this effect by controlling the X here. Now, if I go ahead and change the Y right now, nothing's gonna happen. I'll press Apple Z to undo. I'll go ahead and set these back to their defaults, and then I'm gonna set this to a 90 degree angle. When I set it to a 90 degree angle and I change the X position, nothing happens. I'll press Apple Z to undo. But now, you'll notice that the Y is the controller, right? So at 90 and 270 degrees, and of course, in between. So again, if I turn this a little bit, I'll be able to use both X and Y. But at 90 and 270, remember that the Y is gonna be the controller, at both for the position as well as the offset. Let's move along. We have a global positioning feature, which you're probably gonna use if you use the scale feature. If I scale up, then I'm gonna maybe consider moving this around, etc. I can also rotate this, and this is a global rotation as well. I'll press Apple Z to undo, and let me scroll down a little bit. You'll notice that I have a mimic feature here. What this is gonna do is gonna flip the image left to right. It's mimicking its other look, right? Next, you'll see we have uh, repeat border pixels. To better show this, I'm gonna reset the plugin real quick. I'm gonna change the effect position. So it comes over here. You'll see these edge, edge pixels being repeated. If I scroll down, I can turn off the repeat border pixels, right? Next, I have a solid background. Right now, it's on by default. If I turn this off, then this black area is actually transparent and it can show a video below. But if I turn it on, I can change this. In fact, I can use my color picker to come in here, maybe grab color from his shirt, for example, and set this as the background color. I can go ahead and turn this off to be transparent or turn the repeat border pixels back on. Next, I have a divider. This divider, when I toggle it on by pressing this button, you'll notice that there's a line now separating wherever this effect is occurring. I can increase the width of this line by dragging on the width slider here, and again, I can change the color. Again, with the color picker, maybe something from inside my scene. Maybe the uh, portion of this wall from the background. Next, if I want to lower the opacity, something to that effect. And in the example video, that's exactly what I did. I set the divider color for one portion of one of the clips to something from the background, and I lowered its opacity. And of course, if we drag this rotation or this effect angle, you'll notice that this uh, divider moves with the effect. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and reset this real quick. Again, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. And if you like this, go ahead and like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I hope you like the plugin. Until next time, I'm out.